hypothetical viewers and welcome back to Shining Force 2 where we are fighting Oddler. Uh, we lost last time mostly because uh, I had, you know, been up with some other characters and then <laughs> all of the enemies got turns before Ben got a turn again to retreat. So that didn't go that well. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting more lazy and careless as we get to the end of the game here because I really just want to be done with it. We are so close to finally finishing this game. Um, and the gimmick in this battle is not super interesting to me. It's, it's kind of neat, I guess. Actually, it seems like the shifting tiles or whatever were retained between battles, which is kind of strange. But yeah, so we're just gonna try and get through this map and get to Oddler, our old friend, who is now our enemy. Yeah, so he... You may remember that when we first got to Beto, the town of the bird people, the people at the bottom of the mountain told us that, like, you know, there had recently been, like, a volcano had erupted, and there was an earthquake, and a bunch of crazy shit had happened, and it was because it turned out Vulcanon was fighting the devil army, um, and Oddler turns out to actually have been Odd Eye, the devil who led the attack. Um, but his fight with the Vulcanon injured him, causing him to get amnesia. Um, <laughs> and so he traveled around for a while until we dropped him off at Creed's mansion. Creed seems to have known that he was the devil. Um, it's unclear what, if anything, he told Adler about that. And then when we backtracked to Creed's mansion a little later in the game, we learned that Adler suddenly regained his memory, but he went berserk. Um, Creed tried to stop him and ended up, like, jumping into the sea, dragging them both down. We don't really know what happened to Creed. It... Seems like probably he died. Adler evidently did not, and instead returned to uh, Zeon's side. He doesn't seem particularly bummed about any of this. He was like, I'm pretty, you know, oh, it turns out I'm evil, basically, which is kind of undercuts the whole thing. It's like, why bother setting up this whole plot about, you know, someone we thought was a friend turning out to be an enemy if none of the characters are going to act like they really care all that much about it? Peter seemed mildly distressed, but it was kind of like he just said it obliquely. It wasn't really, it wasn't really a major part of this whole cutscene, which is weird. And we have to fight him on. I think where we're standing is basically um, at the, which again we teleported here by going into the mouth of a statue. But I think we're basically at the old entrance to the uh, ground steel tower. Um, which is now basically a giant hole in the ground, right? It's like a bottomless pit. And so Oddler summoned these. They look like they're basically just glass panes, which we're walking on, just like panels of glass or something, um, over the pit for us to fight on, which is very cool and stylish and all, but I will say it is a little... It's a little exhausting to look at this map. It's, it's just like, uh, this design is not... not great on the eyes. <clears throat> but uh, this battle seems like it's going to take a while because A, there's a lot of enemies so going through all their turns takes a while because we have to have the cursor go over each one, etc. And B, the map is fairly large. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a ton to say about this battle. So this might be kind of a boring video. I say as though the others are more exciting. They are not. You know, aside from learning a little more about how to record video and audio, what I've really learned is that <laughs> I'm not a very interesting person and me making a half hour long video talking idly is very boring. <laughs> I'm just not that. I'm not very informative and I'm also not very funny <laughs> is the basic problem. But whatever, probably no one on earth will ever, will ever watch this, so it won't even matter. And yeah, it's... I mean, I don't know, I just don't... I don't know how much to, <laughs> to chip in about this very lengthy tactics RPG battle. Oh, it, just, it feels like this is just a battle that's going to take so long. And not be particularly interesting. It's just going to... It's another battle where we have to walk from one side of a place to the other, and it's just going to take a while. <laughs> and there's so many enemy turns. All of which also take a while. 
I kind of wish Adler was just walking towards us the whole time. <laughs> so this would feel a little more speedy. Dumb. Um, but yeah, this is like... This is about a 40 of 42, so... Yeah, we're... I think after Adler, basically we're fighting Zeon. I, it might be like a two-part battle or something. We're gonna be in the in the tower and finally defeat the Devil King. Did we ever learn why the tower opened in the first place? Was it just like a coincidence or what? Because I know the devils possessed like our king, but how did that devil escape in the first place? I don't remember that ever being explained. I don't remember them talking at all about devils in um, Shining Force sort of Heja. So I wonder if this is the only game that, and, and all of the games have dragons. So I think the dark dragon from the first one kind of stayed, but I, I wonder if they just gave up on devils after that because they were like, this just wasn't as interesting as we thought it would be. The Cyclops does indeed in its battle sprite appear to be wearing like a green vest and just some baggy pants. It's very wacky. Like, why is he? He's just dressed very casually. Um, but yeah, I, I am looking forward to, uh, you know, after this, I'm going to play some of the, the other Shining Force games. One of which is, um, I forget off the top of my head which Sega console it was on. But it was like a kind of a Gaiden game from the first Shining Force, which is like, like the the robot dude is in it, Adam. That was his name. Um, and they're like looking for Ben. I think it takes place like it's like more literally a Gaiden than it, it takes place part way through the story of one. So that should be neat. We can kind of you know, learn a little more about the world of Shining Force 1. I did a, like, one test recording of it to see if I could get the emulator running properly and stuff. And I'll have to look up what system it was on because the graphics are amazingly ugly it, and, like, very simplified. So I'm assuming it was on, like... I, I think this was on, like, the Sega Genesis. I'm assuming it was on something a lot more primitive than that. Like some, I don't know, maybe a handheld or something. Um, but something that did not have very good graphics. But maybe it'll be interesting. And then there were, I think it never came to the US, and then there were some other uh, Shining Force games, which I think were for the Sega CD, which never came to the US, but do have fan translations. So there is just a whole lot of Shining Force goodness to explore. Um, via the magic of emulators. Woot. <laughs> Hurrah for modern technology. Yeah, I think I'm gonna save Shining Resonance for after the Shining Force games, because, you know, that's not as related. I say that, like, there's some actual audience that, <laughs> like, there's a schedule and an audience that's waiting for stuff. It's like, there is not. In all likelihood, there never will be. <laughs> but yeah, I kind of want to blast through this one just because I've been stalled on it for, like, a year, and I will not have as much time in the near future because it is almost November, and that is the season of noveling. So I will require my free time for writing a novel which also probably no one will ever read. Okay, that's actually slightly less true. Um, if I ever finish that, I will actually post it because it's the sequel to a fanfic I wrote like a decade ago that I really need to finally finish. Gotta, <laughs> gotta wrap it up. Yes, I have a long, I have like a lifetime habit of starting a lot of projects and then not quite managing to finish them. <laughs> the struggle. <sighs> I think we're like halfway through this map. Oh, this battle is just like taking forever. It's so freaking slow. I'm hoping the final two battles will be a little more exciting. Yeah, 
that's that's gonna be the big finale, so. The first game actually ended fairly dramatically with us fighting like the three-headed dark dragon and then Ben sacrificing well the main character anyway. I think his name was Max officially, but uh sacrificing himself to save everyone and using egress to send everyone out of the like dungeon and stuff and you know, that was, a, that was a pretty cool ending, so hopefully this game will measure up. And Actually, I already know a little about the ending. Um, um, and honestly, not just from looking stuff up, but because I think this- I, I think I've like heard of this before from like TV tropes, basically. I think the ending is you just marry the random princess that got kidnapped. The- and if you're thinking to yourself, I forgot that there was a princess. Yeah, she appeared in like one scene at the beginning of the game. Very cool critical hit. But I guess you like love her or whatever. <laughs> or at the very least, you want to become the prince. And or the king, I guess. <laughs> the king is still back in our destroyed, our like rebuilt hometown and did want us to rescue her. But yeah, she did not get to do a whole lot in this game. It's also somewhat unclear why the devils kidnapped her. Like, there didn't seem to be any reason, they just did, and <laughs> they didn't, like, try to, like, threaten us or anything, or, like, ransom her. They just were like, oh, we'll just kidnap this person for no reason. <laughs> so, yeah, it was sort of a random plot point. Poor Chester, he's always getting attacked by the bow enemies. Jeez, there must be bonus damage against flying enemies, because I feel like they, A, always go for my flying characters, and B, do boatloads of damage. This is so show. Slate has high movement, so I'm gonna have him attack this guy slightly further away. Jeez, these demons have so much HP. Oh. We're like 12 minutes in, and we're just still going through this battle. This is... It's not a particularly interesting battle because the fact that it's like this magical floor he's summoned into being means that there's not even any terrain or features. It's all the same, just occasionally there's gaps in the floor, but the floor itself is uniform. So it's... it's not... it's not very interesting to look at either. Like, I, at first I was like, this is cool, but now I'm like, it's a little monotonous. It's kind of wearing out its welcome. There's not exactly a lot of variety, you know? Oh, what can you do? And we appear to be over some sort of massive cavern full of lava, so I guess our town was built on top of a volcano? I guess? <laughs> I don't... I don't know, but that would appear to be the case. Clean up Chester. A lot of bottlenecks on this map too, we're kind of walking through narrow spaces. So this has like a lot of my least favorite features on Shining Force maps. Ugh. It's very slow. don't have more commentary, just enjoy this Shining Force music, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I <laughs> really don't know what to say about this battle, we're just kind of going through it. We're getting towards the top of the map here, you know, so we're making some progress. Um, man, you know, I gotta say, our characters are pretty, I think are still pretty overleveled, I would say. I mean, at the very least, they were grinded all the way up to level 40, so they're more powerful than they otherwise would be. And we even got people, like, the special mithril weapons and stuff, the best ones. And yet, I would say that by and large, we're still not exactly steamrolling this. <clears throat> and, like, I think our strongest character is Peter, who's just strong in general. So it's... <laughs> Anna is so weird. But yeah, it, it seems like somehow we we're at the right power level. I don't think this game has like adaptive power or anything, like adaptive AI or like 
you know, it adjusts the enemy levels to your level. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. So I have <laughs> no idea. Is this game just ridiculously hard if you don't grind and get all the special stuff? Because <laughs> it sort of feels like all this stuff should make the game... Like, if you actually put in the time to get all that stuff, it should make it easier, not on par. He's just attacking a lot with his odd eye beam. He just shoots things out of his eye, like a laser, I guess. Which is such a weird attack. Like, he's a devil, not a robot. But uh, I guess we'll just start attacking him. Man, he really has a lot of HP. Like, he's a little absurd. Think you're making your way up here. Also, as a side note, Sheila, the one who won revenge on Red Baron for killing her fiancé, apparently had nothing particular to say about him joining the party. <laughs> it's... Like, each character gets their own little blurb about, like, their backstory or whatever, but none of it is ever really followed up on. Even for the characters that seem to have some connection to each other. Uh, this, this is a little tough because at the top of the map here we just have, like, clusters of enemies. And also a bit of a bottleneck because it's narrow, so it is actually very difficult to effectively attack everyone. Um, maybe I'll have him use his Raijin. Uh, yeah, I guess this is kind of the best angle. We can hit all three. Nice. Very good, very good. Very good, Slade. Oh, we got level 3 Kachon. I guess he never gets an ice spell? That's so weird. Why does this game hate ice so much? <laughs> I really thought we'd have more ice magic. We, I thought we'd have ice magic. We, I guess Chaz and Tyrant are it, but it's funny that Slade gets both other elements, but not the hat. Well, let's just keep attacking, I guess. Oh, really? Annoying. Uh, we'll move her back to make a little more room for our other fighters. Oh, well, at least we got him to the point where his HP bar is in actual numbers. <laughs> That's progress. Peter is badly weakened, but I just want to keep blasting that eye down as much as we can. Oh, wow. <laughs> Peter's just too good. He just did 81 damage. It feels sort of fitting, though, because he seemed the most betrayed by odd eye attacking us. This battle took almost 20 minutes. Or whatever, we finished it. Okay, here's the cutscene. Ben, you won? You've become so strong. I knew you would. Oh, really? More dialogue for main character, and it's still pointless. Your friends are very good. I knew that when I was traveling with you. Yes, it was interesting. I missed that time. Odd I No, Oddler, did you? No, Peter. I did my best. You were just better than me. We had to be. I wouldn't have had to fight if I had never gotten my memory back. It's funny, fighting was everything to me. Oddler, please don't die! Thank you, Peter. I learned a lot from you. Oh, the pain! Let me say goodbye. If possible, I want to relive my life. Not as a devil next time. Aw, you know, this is a rare moment where I think the game's writing actually worked. Because that was actually, you know, genuinely, that was like, oh, I feel a little pang in my heart. Sob, sob. How sad. Ben, Sir Astral. Adler had a pure spirit. I'll miss him. Don't cry for him now. This is Zeon's doing. We shall go onward and remember Adler in our hearts. Like, genuinely, that that was actually, that was one of the few parts of this game where I'm like, that was actually written in a way that, that brought out emotion, you know? Where, like, you know, Adler's, like, thinking back and, like, he misses, the, you know, the time he spent traveling with us. Before that, he thought only of fighting. That was his whole life. But he really enjoyed the time he spent traveling with us. And he, you know, he wishes he could be reincarnated as someone who could live a peaceful life like that, you know? And Peter was the one who was, like, the closest friend to him and is sad to see him gone. And, you know, that only heightens the dark irony of Peter being the one to strike him down. 
It is still weird when Ben occasionally gets dialogue because it's all just weird generic lines. There's not much to him, but um, but good job, game. You know the the dialogue before the battle just felt like a mess and kind of weirdly inconsistent in tone, but that actually worked well and was solid. Farewell, Oddler. Farewell. Okay, we gotta fight our way into the Tower of Ancients. Uh, apparently, this is gonna be a very long battle, so you know. I, <laughs> maybe we'll cut it halfway through. I don't know. I don't really want to cut the episode of 20 minutes, you know? What is this? It's Creed! You did survive! I don't remember what voice I gave him. It was something weird. Unbel unbe unbelievable. You finally arrived. Creed? I mean, Mr. That's okay, Peter. I doubted you'd ever make it here. The enemies you faced so far were strong. Yes, they were. Seriously, now he just talks? Why am I here? Is that your question, Ben? I wanted to help you. There is no church around here. Think of me as a priest. Now what can I do for you? <laughs> I'll even give you the dialogue that the priest does. Ah, sure, let's save the game, I guess. Um, I'm debating whether to like cut this one short and do... It's only 20 minutes, but I guess that would make sense. You know, it's a full battle, and we'll... Yeah, so let's... Yeah, let's cut this one short. Um, so Creed did survive after all, and came here to help us out and save our game. That's that's actually kind of fun. That's nice. So in this episode, we fought against the most powerful of the devil soldiers, or devil lords, or whoever. Oddler. Uh, the, de the devil Odd Eye, our old friend Oddler. Uh... His death was actually genuinely sad, you know, it's, he was our friend and, you know, we, we had no choice but to strike him down, even though he really wished that he could have lived a peaceful life with us. And now in the next fight, we're basically just fighting our way up to Zeon. The next battle is fighting our way up the tower and then Zeon. So, um, that'll probably be two episodes of this battle is really long, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're in the end game now. We only have <laughs> a very little bit left of Shining Force 2, so hypothetical viewers look forward to this.